Hello, a geophone is a device used in geophysics to detect ground movement. It is specifically designed to measure seismic waves, when a produ uh, which are produced by various sources, including earthquakes and explosions. Typically, consists of a mass uh, suspended on, the, on a spring and a coil of wire within a magnetic field. When the ground shakes due to seismic activity, the mass moves causing the coil to move within the magnetic field. This, uh, this movement induces an electrical voltage in the coil. This signal is then amplified and filtered, then is brought to a computer where it is visualized and logged for later analysis which spe with spe specially designed software for this purpose. Unfortunately, these sensors are mostly unavailable to self builders due to their high price. This time I will describe to you how to make such a sensor yourself for free from parts that can be found in any workshop. However, the sensitivity does not lag behind commercial geophones at all. Even this sensor reacts to shocks in all possible directions, which make it incredible, incredibly practical. In other words, it replaces many different types of geophones. This project is sponsored by PCBWay. They have sold the services you need to create your project at the best price, whether it's a school project or complex professional project. On PCBWay you can share your experiences or get inspiration for your next project. They also provide completed surface mount SMT PCB assembly service at the best price and ISO 9001 quality control. Uh, visit www.pcbway.com for more services. Uh, we only need a few components to make it. First, a plastic container which serves to isolate the sensor from external influences and it is preferable to be transparent. I use uh, an ordinary plastic box for storing sugar or coffee. Next, a small mains transformer tanking out of an old electronic device with a power of a few watts. Then neodymium, neodymium magnet. I use a magnet removed from an old PC hard drive. Aluminum or copper plate with a thickness of about one millimeter. Small light spring. plastic road and some nuts and bolts as needed. This time we will make only the geophone and in one of the following videos I will present you the method of making the electronic part where I will try to do it in the simplest way so that it is closer to, the, to a larger number of enthusiasts who potentially, potentially would like to make it. I will also describe how to set up a simple 24-7 monitoring software to work with this sensor. Now let's start making the sensor. First we need to disassemble the transformer, actually separate the windings from the metal part. We are interested in the primary winding, which contains a larger number of windings with a thinner wire. If the windings are covered with insulation tape, uh, like this, like in my case, uh, then, with an ohm wetter, uh, we look for a, for the winding with the highest resistance, usually 500 ohms to 1.5 kilo ohms. First, let's separate the windings from metal part.
It can be seen on camera, but it can clearly see that this coil has many more turns of very thin wire than the other one. However, I will measure its resistance. And it is 1.5 kilo ohms. So we need this coil. Of course, we can also make this coil by winding 500 to 1500 turns of thin lacquered copper wire with a diameter of 0.1 millimeter. This coil needs to be glued to the bottom of the box. Uh, I made this mat because the bottom of the container is uneven in the center. Then we take the two layers from the winding with thin wires outside the box to a small terminal. Uh, next, we need to glue the aluminum plate on the top of the coil, which should be have, which should have the same shape as the coil. This plate has the function of preventing the long-term oscillation of the magnet after the shake, and this process is called damping. Uh, when the magnetic field moves through the conductor, the movement the ma movement induces a uh, eddy current in the conductor. The flow of electrons in the conductor immediately creates an opposite magnetic field, which results in damping of the magnet. Here's what this look like in practice. If we drop a, an aluminum tile along this aluminum rail, it will slide at the high speed. The same thing happens if we try with iron. But if we try now with a permanent magnet, magnet it will gradually slide to the bottom. We use this property to dump the oscillations of the pendulum from the seismometer. Now we need somehow to attach the spring to the lid and for that purpose first I made this steel wire holder. Now in the middle of the cover we need to mount the spring which should be relatively soft. In continuation of the spring, we install a hollow plastic rod uh, of a certain length, at the end of which we screw an iron bolt, which serves to precise positioning of the magnet over the coil. And Next, we place the neomedium magnet on this screw.
the length of the combination spring plus rod plus screw plus magnet should be adjusted so that when we when the lid is closed the magnet has approximately 1 to 1.5 mm above the aluminum plate. As you can see, sensor is sensitive to shocks from all directions and axes. During the vertical shock, which usually occurs near the epicenter, the springs react and during a horizontal movement, the pendulum can move in all directions 360 degrees. Such sensors that respond in all axes are very expensive and are used only for professional purposes. This do-it-yourself geophone can be mounted on the ground using spikes of other mechanisms to ensure good contact with the, with the Earth's surface. In some cases, geophones are buried at varying depth. And finally a short conclusion, this sensor is conceived as a part of the final project which will actually be a standalone seismometer and will display the relative intensity of the earthquake at the point of detection. Determining the direction, distance and magnitude of the earthquake at the epicenter requires the interaction of at least three seismometers but for this topic in another project. In the next video uh, that I will promote soon will be described the electronic part consisting of an amplifier, filter, AD converter and PC software. Thus we will get a complete, extremely cheap and sensitive home seismometer whose results, seismograms are almost identical to those of the official seismological institutes. Uh, in the following I will present you several official reports from, from my seismometer which uses the above described uh, sensor.